The bottom of this JBL speaker has a special kind of texture on it. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but it's like a circular kind of reflective pattern, all right? It's kind of similar to what you see at the bottom of a pot or a pan, but it's not quite the same. This is different, and I'm gonna explain why. So when you look at the bottom of a pot or a pan, you have this brushed metal, right? So it's a, it's a metal surface which has been steel, which has been brushed with a steel brush in a circular kind of pattern. It feels smooth when you touch it, so it just looks a little bit different, right? But this thing that we're trying to create, it's much bigger circle, so you can actually feel it with your finger when you go over it. And it's a much different type of pattern. We can't just use a shader for this, all right? So the way we're going to do this is we're going to model this type of pattern in Blender, in high poly. Then we're going to bake it as a normal map, and we're going to apply that normal map to an object like this here. We have to start by creating a circle. I'm going to create a circle with something like 128 uh, per vertices. You don't want to go too high because you're going to have too many polygons. It's, it might become a little bit laggy, all right? But 128 seems to work pretty well. Then you're going to extrude this circle and you're going to scale the extruded part down towards the middle, right? You can just scale it to zero, but make sure you don't merge the vertices because if you turn these into one vertex, you're not going to be able to make loop cuts like this. And we need the loop cuts to make this kind of pattern. So after you scale it to zero, use your loop cut tool and add as many loop cuts as you can, the more the better. Something like this. In my case, I'm adding 150 loop cuts like this, all right? Now we're just going to select one of these edge loops that goes from the middle towards the outside. We're gonna press Control i to invert the selection and we're going to delete everything else except that one little edge loop, all right? So now we just have a long edge with a bunch of vertices on it. Now to create this pattern, we're going to go up here and we're going to uh, open the select menu and we're going to click on check or deselect. That's going to deselect every other vertex. So now we have every other vertex still selected and we can move these selected vertices down by just a little bit. And that's going to give us like a zigzag pattern. Now, if we go to top view and we place our 3D cursor in the middle of this object right here, we can press Alt E. We can use a spin tool. Make sure you're in edit mode for this. And we can set the number of steps to something like 128 or whatever, right? Make sure you don't check use duplicates. And this is going to turn your one edge into a beautiful circle, which is extruded out of this edge. All right. And as you can see, we now have this pattern, which we can bake onto the normal map. Now just select everything and go to mesh, merge and merge by distance, just to delete any extra stuff because it might mess up our normal map. And we need a plane, which is going to be slightly above this surface like this. And also make sure that the plane is a little bit bigger than this circle. Now go to the shading tab, add a new material to the plane. And in the material, we need to create an image texture node, which we can use to generate a new image. So click on new, set the resolution to something pretty high, like 2048 by 2048. This is going to make sure you get a nice and smooth normal map. But if you don't need this much detail, you can just go like 124 by 124. We're going to name this something like circle pattern or whatever. Make sure to set the type to blank and check 32-bit float. I don't know why you have to check 32-bit float. I just saw somebody else do this when they were baking normal maps, so I don't want to try any other way. Then click OK and set the color space to non-color. This is going to allow you to bake a normal map. Now switch over to cycles because you need to use cycles if you want to bake something. Scroll down to the bake menu in the render properties tab, set the bake type to normal and check selected to active. Now we're going to tell Blender to bake the bumpy surface on the circle onto the plane as a normal map. So we have to select the circle, then we have to select the plane, and this is how we're going to bake the normal map. Now before you bake, you might want to check your normals. So go up here in object mode and check face orientation. Now the blue surfaces is where your normal is facing, which means this one is inverted because the red surface is above. That's going to mess up our normal map. So select the circle, go to edit mode, press shift N, and if you have to, check this inside box to correct the normals. Now both of the blue surfaces are above, which means both of the normals of the surfaces are facing upwards, which means we can get a good normal map. So now one more time, select the circle and then shift select the plane. So the plane is the second object which we selected, which means that's the active object, which means we bake from selected to active. Now make sure you select your circle pattern node here where you have the image loaded, because that's going to tell Blender we want to bake this into this node, into this image. Set your number of samples to something really low because for some reason that makes your bake faster even though it looks the same. And you can get a preview of your texture over here by just loading the image in your image editor. Currently it's just black. Now just click bake and you have to wait a few seconds for Blender to bake your texture. So let's apply this to another material now. I wouldn't recommend deleting this setup because sometimes it happens that your image just randomly disappears and you have to bake it again. So you might want to just keep this on the side in case you have to bake it again. But I also recommend saving this image using this little menu up here. Go to image, save as, and save it to your computer. So now we have this normal map loaded into this image texture node. 
and we can just select any object like this cylinder right here. We can add a new material to that. We can change the color. We can do whatever we want. You can even add a separate material to this object if you want only one part of your object to have this material. So for example, I'm going to add a new material to this and I'm going to assign it only to the top surface. And this one can even have a different color if you want to. Or you can just copy that color and apply it to this the new material. Now in the new material, I'm going to load an image texture node through which I'm going to load the normal map by clicking this button and selecting circular pattern. And if we just run this through a normal map node like this, we plug the color into the color and the normal into the normal of this new material. Now this normal map is going to appear on the surface of this cylinder. Currently it's not adjusted because the UVs are not mapped properly. You can correct this by going to UV editing, then select the surface which you want to properly map, press U and click on UV unwrap. And you also want to go to texture preview so you can see what you're doing. And now you can just choose which part of the texture you want this circle to cover and that's going to appear on your cylinder. We're going to make it a little bit smaller so we can see the edges a little bit better. But as you can see, we now have this bumpy pattern appearing on the cylinder, even though it's a very low poly object. And this is exactly what I did with my JBL speaker right here. And that's why I have this beautiful pattern, but I didn't crank up the polygon count too much. All right. You can use this method to bake any kind of pattern and put it on a surface to make it appear bumpy without actually cranking up your polygon count. Let me know what you want to see next in the comments and I'm going to see you guys in the next one.